Hello and welcome to this episode of Talking to Introverts, our podcast. And um, you're with me, Sammy Blackford, and my co-host, co-introvert, Denise Oliver. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Talking to Introverts is our podcast here on YouTube, and we talk all about what it is to be an introvert in today's world in you know this modern life that we're all living that let's be honest our modern world is set up by extroverts for extroverts so sometimes being an introvert can be a bit of a challenge so what are we talking about today Denise? Well one of our favorite things we're going to talk about cacao oh it's a uh, lovely stuff isn't it? <laughs> 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 yes what shall we talk about to do with cacao because you need to give me a list so that I don't ramble on because I can't <laughs> yeah cacao is one of these topics that I know you Denise can talk about for a long long time um, <laughs> and I uh, enjoy drinking let's just put it that way um so not strictly um a reserve for introvert but it's something that you and I both find beneficial um for many reasons so we thought we'd talk about this and you know it's an excuse to talk about something that we love um so what i i just start by telling you my recent experience of cacao so last week i was drinking a cup of cacao every day and here i'm talking about ceremonial cacao um and um i was it was an experiment drinking it every day because usually i kind of save it for a special occasion <laughs> um because like ceremonial cacao kind of implies that it's for a special occasion for ceremony um so i was experimenting with it for the um like the physical benefits so like the stress relief and all of that kind of stuff which i did find um very helpful especially um because last week i was on my period so it really helped to kind of ease those symptoms that I get when I'm at that phase of my cycle. Um, so, yeah, that's my recent experience of it. Denise, do you want to kind of explain what ceremonial cacao is? Let's kind of rewind a little bit. Like, What is it? Why are we talking about ceremonial cacao in particular? Um, I was, I've said this to you before, but I can't actually recall the first time I had it. I still can't recall it. I've been racking my brains as to when it might have been. Um, so what is it? So what's cacao? Why are we saying cacao and not cocoa or chocolate? So cacao is like the first stage of creating chocolate and cacao comes from a tree it is a fruit <laughs> which is one of those things like oh am I having one of my five a day when I have chocolate no you're not because of what chocolate gets mixed with so cacao it's often we use the word cacao when we're talking about a pure form of the product itself so it hasn't fallen far from the tree shall we say Cacao grows in great big colourful pods. They're beautiful. Oranges, yellows, greens, purples. They're, they're just stunning to see. And I, one of my bucket list wishes is to actually go to a cacao plantation. So will it ever happen? I don't know. So let's just do add in something else and then make sure I come back on track. <laughs> so my friend Sarah, all one word, I'll tell her that I'm mentioning her so that she gets to listen to this at some point, is now doing voluntary services. Um, it's not VSO, it's VSA because she's gone from New Zealand now to do this voluntary services. A, I don't know what the A stands for. I can't remember. Abroad? It's Abroad, it might be. That would be a good one, wouldn't it? So we have VSO here, Voluntary Services Overseas. So she's gone off in her capacity as a mental health nurse to an island off Papua New Guinea called Bougainville. And while she's there, she's only blooming well gone and been to a cacao plantation. <sighs> like, that's my thing. What are you doing? <laughs> Um, and there I've got videos now of her showing how the cacao, when it's the cacao big pod, when it's opened, there's like this white mushy stuff. And then these 
what look like big beans inside. And basically, you just scoop it out. You eat it like a fruit. So there's a fruitiness to it and there's a bitterness to it. And the bitterness comes from the cacao nibs, which are inside the cacao beans. Is it getting complicated now? <laughs> and it's, it sounds like um, Russian dolls, you know, inside yeah. this bit is this bit and then inside that bit is that bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is what it's like. And so to actually get to anything that looks like chocolate, those the cacao pod is opened, the cacao beans are taken out and they're dried. Um, when it comes to really good quality cacao, they're, they're dried in the sun. They just left to dry out in the sun. In terms of more commercial cacao, it's done on industrial levels. Um, and then once the bean has dried out, what you're wanting to get to is what's inside that bean, and that is the cacao nibs. And they're just tiny, hard bits of plant <laughs> that um, when you when you eat cacao nibs, they taste of chocolate, but they don't taste of sweetness or milkiness or anything because that's not been added yet. And if you chew them for long enough, they make your teeth squeak. So they actually clean your teeth, <laughs> which is quite something, really. I was going to say there is there, there are strange texture, aren't they? Because they they're very hard, but when you bite them there's like an instant powderiness yeah and a bit of oil is released to them yeah it's a strange texture mm. yeah it is um what what you get what what you want from the cacao nibs is you, you they are rolled in some way um to create a paste and you can use that paste you can buy cacao paste um and from that on an industrial level, is that that paste is then separated out into the well at that point cacao powder and cacao butter, and then that powder and that butter have to be mixed back together to create something that we then recognise as a chocolate. And then depending on where that happens, whether it's gone into a factory to happen or it's happening with a family that are creating the products. Um, it depends on the quality that you then get. So I'm afraid your big companies have lost the quality in favour of quantity. And a lot of the cacao that is produced worldwide is produced in Africa. And it's the African cacao that goes off to Hershey's or Cadbury's or whoever else there is, Mars, you know, that makes up the generic um, chocolate bars that we know. If you want to buy true cacao products, then you find the bean to bar producers. And I'm going to name just one because he was where I started and I still go back to. And that's Forever Cacao and Pablo Spall. Um, and his he gets the beans from a single origin estate in, um, I'm going to say Peru. I think it's Peru because I know he visits Peru. He goes to the plantations there um, to see what the growing conditions are like and what's going on. And cacao strikes me that it's a lot like a good wine. You pay for a really good wine. You pay for a really good vintage. And it's the same with cacao products. Mm. And ceremonial grade cacao has had very little done to it. It's produced literally from the cacao nibs and set into its shape. And that's it. It's not had any further producing than that. It also comes from one specific type of uh, cacao bean. And that's, and I hope I'm going to say this right, you cacao aficionados out there, Criollo. That's how I say it. C R I O L L O Criollo. Um, there's two other varieties which I can't remember the names of, but the Criollo is the ceremonial grade one, and that's the only thing that Pablo works with. And he was one of the first importers of cacao beans into this country. There's a lot more people doing that now. But he really, he was really at the forefront of um, creating bean-to-bar stuff. 
a long, long mm. time ago now, years and years ago. Um, and so it's got a very, very special energy. And the people who produce this Criollo cacao firmly believe that it's a gift from the gods. They really do. And um, it has something about it. It's got magical properties. As you discovered, you were drinking mm. it every day. Um, in terms of a ceremony, that's a different level again. It's not just about making a hot chocolate. Yeah. It's about the intention behind it. And often with ceremonies, mm. it's, um, groups of people coming together um, to find their, it's like, a well, it's, it is a plant medicine. And so it can affect you differently at different times, just like any medication can. Mm. But it's a lot safer. Um, I was thinking as when I knew we were talking about this on this episode, today, I was like, it's going to sound like um, this episode is um sponsored by forever cacao because i know we're gonna like <laughs> recommend that company and his products and it's not in any way sponsored by no. forever cacao or um pablo but uh yeah hugely recommend his products um they are amazing um and with you saying that you um can't remember the first time you had cacao ceremonial cacao I can remember the first time I had it. And um <clears throat> I remember you with it. <laughs> Speaking of uh cacao ceremonies, it was at I think the first one you held. Um because I don't I'd never had it before, but there was something like, yes, this is like, yeah, I need I need to get me some of this. Um and pre the COVID, you know, oh, back yeah, then. Well before, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it was a few years ago now, and um, you were holding a full moon cacao ceremony. And um, just given this cup of this dark brown, it's quite, it's, I'm going to, uh, rich is the word that comes to my mind. And in many ways, so like it's a really rich brown color. It's a really rich texture. It's not like, Although it's a liquid, it's quite a thick liquid, isn't it? It's got substance to it. And like then there's the smell of it and just the whole experience. I think rich is the word that comes to mind. Um, and um, you were talking about the, the cacao and the benefits of it. And um, just guiding us through this, this cacao ceremony, <laughs> I remember another of our friends was sat to the right of me. And kind of halfway through the, the evening, she turned to me and she was like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, well, I think the phrase I used was, I just got no shits to get right now. Like, <laughs> I'm so chill, so chill. Um, and that was like, it was amazing because I am the person who is always tense, always on edge, always like stress, like through the roof. And it was just like my whole body just went, oh, oh, that's nice. So relaxed. Um, and then, but then I remember like at the end of the evening when I was driving home, I was like really, it was energized the word. I was quite giggly, you know, and like quite um, like I'd been for a night out with um, my girlfriend, you know, like that kind of like, Boyed up, giggly kind of. Um, so it was a very interesting experience. Yeah, it is. I remember my first uh, full ceremony. Again, it was Pablo because I met him by this time and wanted to do a ceremony in Chester. Um, <clears throat> Because he still does, he does his own ceremonies. I don't know, it's somewhere in Wales. I can't pronounce the name of. I'm so sorry, Wales. Um, but some of your words are very bizarre, and that I just, my head just, well, what my head reads and what my mouth can say are very two very different things. Anyway, um, and I'd approached him when we had it all together. I'd found a venue and. Um, a room within the venue so we could only have up to 15 people that went really quickly no problem getting people to a cacao ceremony and being really blown away by the fact we weren't just going to drink cacao 
there was Pablo had this whole range of um, musical instruments. He had great big gongs that he was going to whack and, you know, other things. I can't remember the names of that create um, particular sounds that play all over us. Oh, my goodness me. Drinking the cacao and just going deep within myself was quite a revelation in that bit like you. It's like, whoa, I can sort of feel this going somewhere and hmm, it's definitely moving around my body. And then we were all lying down and I just had this sudden sense of my body didn't want to be in the same room as everybody else. Mm. And that I had, I couldn't lie on my back. I had to like turn on my side and almost fetal position to just be with myself and, and the cacao within. Um, and it was interesting as well in that a full, a full um, ceremonial grade uses quite a lot of cacao. So it is a, it's a bit like um, like using mushrooms or something like that. It's an adaptogen. So it works slightly differently within everybody's body. It will adapt to what's going on for them. So some people will become incredibly calm. Other people are suddenly incredibly energized. And it hit me in a really calming sense. Felt like I was falling through the floor. Like, oh, oh, this is nice. Uh, and then once Pablo had finished with all his instruments and what have you, um, we would then we then sat up and everyone started to talk about what it had been like for them. But what I loved with him and his partner Tad at the time was that there was no rush. There was no rush at all. Say what you want to say. Don't say anything. And we were a whole. It was, mainly women. I think Jackie Jones had brought Max with her. I'm sure it was Max who was there, her eldest son. And we just sort of like sat there looking at each other around this room like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get this sort of happy days. <laughs> um, and then he had a bit of cacao left. So I, of course, had a bit more. But I got to a point where it was like, oh, no, no more. My body just does not want me to finish this off. It's got what it needs. It's got mm. enough within. And it's just incredible. And one of the things I've heard Pablo say is that um, Pablo's, I might have got this wrong, but I might ask him to listen to this and then he can update me. But I'm sure he was in the music industry or something along those lines. And he discovered cacao and knew that he could, all his experience would take him down the road of using cacao as something that was beneficial to everyone. Whereas for a lot of people in the arts, music style industry, they turn to alcohol or drugs mm. as a way to keep going. And he just recognized that he could keep going on cacao. It mm. gave him the energy he required to you know, do day-to-day -day things, whatever he needed to do. Um, and that if he then put music with it, that you could have a rave and have had a really good time. He could still drive home <laughs> 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 and be happy driving home. You, know, mm. you, you definitely have this like happy high with cacao. Yeah. If I'm about to sit down for a day of, at the laptop and my brain's like all over the place. I'm like, oh, God, I'm just going to procrastinate here all day if I, you know, I've got to do something. And it's like, oh, I'll go make some cacao. Now, I don't make it to the full ceremonial, putting the intention into the cacao, taking my time, whisking it for so many whisks of the, you know, to get the froth and all of that. I will blend it as a drink, not necessarily ceremonially. And I'll come back to my desk and I'll just sit with it and stare out the window. And you know what? Before I know it, I'm into whatever needs doing. And that, yes, we were talking about time passing earlier to ourselves and the day passes, but I look back and it's like, oh my God, I've been so productive. Mm. That's incredible. It's like given me a brain focus. So there's clearly 
within cacao for me something that my brain really likes it lights it up in a really good way mm. um, and then a bit like Pablo has said at the end of a rave you can still drive home because you're not alcohol or anything like that and by the end at the end of the day it's like oh I'm done that's great I've got all that done one cup of cacao incredible stuff it really <laughs> is incredible stuff and there's many ways in which you can make up your own cup of cacao so mm. do you have a preferred way Sammy do you have well one that you like more than others I've always been uh, just, you know, as it comes, cacao, I use oat milk, a bit of coconut palm sugar. Um, but this past week, well, um, I think it started when I ordered, again, <laughs> not sponsoring this episode, from Forever Cacao, one of their blends. Their, um, I think it's their Connect blend, blend and it's got cinnamon and chaga mushroom in it um with the cacao um and i i really loved that one like my body really loved that one um i can understand why it's called connect <laughs> really helped like connect everything like the whole mind body soul um connection uh so this past week i i i didn't have any of that blend left but I had the like the pure ceremonial cacao and I blended it either with a little pinch of sea salt which I really liked that one just added an extra little depth to it um or some grated ginger mm. also really like that one I do like a good bit of ginger anyway so in the cacao was really nice yeah, I think what I would say to any and all of that is um, this. Oh, let me just think. So there's two things that I've been taught. I've done a, a cacao ceremony course and it's always said not to use dairy products at all. So don't use uh, cow's milk. Go mm -hmm. for a plant based milk and if possible, organic, because you've got this super high quality cacao. And you want to have, you want to add it to the best of ingredients. And you don't want those ingredients to uh, mask in any way the benefits of the cacao. Mm. And the same with any herbs or spices. There's so much you can add to cacao that is going to uh, enhance it. I mean, I love ginger with cacao. Love it. Oh, so much. And cinnamon's a really good one. But another spice that's great is chili. Because mm. back in the day, in Mexico, in Peru, with the Mayans, they didn't have sugar. They added chili to theirs. So it was this weird, bitter, <laughs> super spicy drink that they had. And actually, that's one of my favourite ways of having it. Um, don't always need that extra warmth but oh there's something about it going down the back of the throat it's like oh I don't quite know what this is going to do today but it feels great already <laughs> <laughs> so there's many ways in which you can uh, enhance the cacao most most recently my favorite way has been cacao with um, hot water and blending it in the Vitamix blender I've got with a date just love having a date as the sweetener in there mm. and that's it and it comes out of the blender and it's got the froth and apparently if you could back in the day uh, with the mains if you could create the froth just by hand churning it um then you you got a, like a higher position of cacao maker <laughs> cacao drinks maker a bit like cocktails i guess isn't it um mm. but with the vitamix because it's high speed and I'm sure other products are available, but, you know, Vitamix has been around forever. The the bubbles and the froth that come out of that are rainbow coloured. And they're just beautiful to see. It's like, oh, God, I'm drinking a rainbow here. It's amazing. It really is a phenomenal plant medicine, as well as it can be an everyday drink as well. Mm. There's no, There's no rules, no... There's nothing out there that dictates how much of this you drink in a day. It's up to you as the individual 
to work out each day what you require. Yeah, and I think it's going back to what you said earlier about how you're, when you first went to a cacao ceremony and your body knew when it had had enough. And I think that's the key, isn't it? Because I've had that experience as well, um, where I think it was one at one of your later ceremonies that I came to. And um, again, like you were saying, there was some left. So, you know, we had like a top up and my brain was like, oh, yeah, they like this is like really nice. I love this stuff. Um, but then like a few sips later, my body's like, no, we don't need any more. Yeah. And I think it's being aware of that and like taking notice of it as well, like following your body's guidance on that um, and not just, oh, well, I've made it so, you know, I have to drink it sort of thing. Um, I have, um, when I've been like that, um, I've started drinking it. I've put the cup down, completely forgotten it's there. And I've turned around later in the day and gone, oh, I didn't realise I hadn't finished that. I've got half a cup of cacao left. And it's like, really don't want that right now. Mm. And I just save it for the next day and I put it in a smoothie. Because I'm not, it's not a ceremonial grade cacao anymore, to my mind. It's like, no, it's been sat around all day now, uh, but I'm not wasting it either. <laughs> uh, and so I add it to a smoothie. Mm. And I love it like that. That works for me as well. It's good stuff. It's... um. It can be a bit a bit of a strange one because it looks like dark chocolate, but it's a hundred percent cacao. It's bitter mm. <laughs> and it smells a phenomenal. It really open a packet of well, let's go back to Pablo's forever cacao. Open the packet and just stick your nose in, and the aroma that comes off it is like nothing else. Whereas I can't smell coffee i hate the smell of coffee don't want to go near it cacao i could smell it all day long <laughs> um, <laughs> don't have a problem with that and it does get to a point where having other chocolate it's just not the same because then what i taste is the sweet the the milk and it's like where's the chocolate where's the cacao in this um so yeah it's um it's good stuff i wish i could recall when i forever ever first had it but i can't i just can't bring it to mind at all it's gone but you can remember yours and i remember your little face i really do because <laughs> <laughs> you were like in the little dream world <laughs> <laughs> and that's it's just a great thing to see and i think sometimes people can can fight that they can fight what's actually going on like they don't want to believe that it's as simple as mm. making up you know cutting a bit of cacao from a block of cacao which they look phenomenal when they're in blocks they really it's like gold bullion but it's mm. you can eat it um and just choosing the amount that you require for that actual moment I tend not to go beyond like 25 to 30 grams when it's daytime, but the full ceremonial amount is um, said to be 42 grams and no one can tell you why. It's 42 grams per person in 200 mils of liquid. It's just the way it's made up. It's just how it seems to have happened. I don't know. I don't know. I do want to mention a guy. You can find him on Instagram as Keith's Cacao. And Keith looks like Dumbledore. He's got long hair, white beard, little round glasses. And um, there's lots of stories about Keith. And one of them being that he was drawn to, I think he lives in Peru or somewhere around that area. Uh, and he was drawn to actually go in search of true cacao and uh, bring it to the world. And when Pablo started making his cacao, someone had gone to wherever it is Keith lives, I can't remember. It's on Instagram, find him on Instagram. Uh, and had taken some of Pablo's um, cacao that he was creating as bars with him and Keith really rated it as something very, very special. So Ooh, you know, Pablo you has the skill, really mm. does have the skill. 
And it's, you know, he lives between England and Wales, somewhere off the A5. So, you know, I'm in Chester, you're in Wrexham. He's very close. I'm going to support someone who's down the road creating a phenomenal product. Mm. I do this wherever I can with whatever I, you know, I'm aware of. Um, And so, yeah, he's just always been that the go-to guy for me. There are lots of people creating this and it depends on the area you're in as to um, where you buy your cacao from, buy it online, buy it from someone you know. It's your Mm -hmm. choice at the end of the day, isn't it? There are certain caveats with cacao. Uh, It has lots of potential benefits, but you do have to be careful. We're talking about this. We love it. But if you've got... um, like certain heart conditions, cacao is a vasodilator, i.e. it opens up blood vessels. So if you get a bit panicky about things and you have um, arrhythmias, butterflies type thing in your chest, then you do need to be careful with cacao. That said, it is a plant medicine, um, but you just never know how it might affect you. So you have to watch that. If you're someone who isn't used to drinking a lot of water and does have a lot of dairy products, um, especially cow's milk, then when you first start with cacao and drinking that, it can give you whopping great headaches. You just need to remember to be hydrated, well hydrated. Uh, And then the other thing is antidepressants. Um, It's always recommended that you don't mix cacao and tryptophan and MAOs, and I'm reading this because I can't fully remember, monoamine oxidase inhibitors um, are found in cacao and certain antidepressants you shouldn't take cacao with. Um, That said, if you are going to have a go because you want to see whether having cacao and coming off antidepressants, always check in with your doctor first, then start with a very, very low dose of cacao just to see how it makes you feel. Don't go above 10 to 15 grams and then gradually build up and see what happens and see if you find that that you could actually use cacao instead of antidepressants. And it does mm-hmm. depend on why you're on antidepressants, of course. Um, but yeah, you need to make sure to talk this through with um, your doc before you do anything. But the benefits for me and for you, I think, Sammy, outweigh um, any of the cautions. It's a full on cacao brings up emotions, a full on cacao, a full on ceremony with cacao brings up emotions. You can release these really easily. Um, After having the cacao, you can feel like you want to sing and dance all night. And then at other times when I have it, I want to be really quiet just with myself um and as i've said with um using it during the day it can really enhance my concentration my brain just gets into a zone of concentration and i'm like oh that's so good such a good thing to know about that might help you um And then there's cacao and mushrooms that very much being used. And one of the mushrooms that is good for the brain is lion's mane. So you get a good quality lion's mane along with your phenomenal quality cacao. And this could really help you with your uh, concentration and your brain's adaptability in certain Mm. circumstances. Not to say it's going to do exactly the same for everyone. It's an adaptogen. It will do what it needs to do within the body. Um, And I just, it's for me and has been for, I don't know, I'm going to say 10 to 15 years, something like that. Um, It's just been one of those things that I've kept regularly topping up in my cupboard. I'm rarely without it uh, because of the effect it has on me. And once I started on ceremonial grade cacao, I found that the desire for everyday chocolate has really waned. I can eat it every mm. now and then. But I, I'm now an 85 to 90% chocolate girl. And having the sweeter chocolates that have got next to no cacao in them, um, just not the same. It just I can't you can't compare them in any way, shape, or form. 
Cacao is magic. It is. Yeah, I'm the same. Like, <clears throat> I can't eat like dairy chocolate anymore. <laughs> um, and even if like I am not quite a high concentration of cacao as you, so I'm like the seventy percent plus. Um, and even somewhere it's like. 60% I'm like oh no no I could do it as a, pu at a push but and it's it's the, as with anything once you get to know what a better quality of thing is available and what and how your body reacts to that um, it's like if you were switch to an organic food diet rather than you know all the chemical laden ones your body will get used to that and won't want to go back. It's good stuff. Um, just a fun fact I want to share with everyone. So we have midges, don't we? And mm -hmm. like, what are midges good for, really and truly, other than biting the hell out of me uh, when I'm on holiday? Well, actually, where cacao trees grow, midges are the insects that do the pollination. So they do have their uses. Um, so, you know, let's not kill too many of them. But <laughs> send them all back <laughs> to where the cacao trees are. Go and pollinate over there. You're in the wrong country here. Um, and there's um, just reading again off my uh, fun facts here. There are six species of midges that do the pollinating of cacao flowers. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yes, I still want to go to a plantation. I really do. <laughs> um, okay, so I know we can talk about this for forever. Um, so oh, when yeah, I when I ask the question, "Are we done?" We probably wouldn't be done. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. But shall we be done? <laughs> <laughs> there is so much more we could talk about, isn't there? About ceremonies and all of that sort of thing. Yeah, there is a, a lot we can talk about. But I would say, um, you know, find a website that you like that's got just put in ceremonial grade cacao into Google and Pablo's will be one of the top ones, if not the top one for this country. But there are others, um, other producers available. You want bean to bar and you want Criollo cacao. If it's not Criollo, it's not ceremonial. Just know that. Um, and these come from family run single origin plantations they haven't been cross pollinated in any way and cacao the trees are they look amazing they like to grow in the shade they like um they like a certain warmth and humidity that's why we can't grow them here mm. um, and just like carob grows in the mediterranean across the mediterranean cacao grows across a certain um temperate i think it is climate is it temperate anyway goes grows in a certain climate so we mm. cannot grow it here it just wouldn't happen we don't get the warmth on a you know day and night time warmth or the humidity that's required the other thing i was just gonna i'll finish on this because you know you said I was <laughs> no obviously not um is that cacao pods have to be harvested by hand so they haven't yet developed a way of harvesting them using machines. So it's um, it's an interesting one. And a lot of the controversy around cacao growing comes from the African continent um, because it's there that it's grown in vast proportions, not on single origin estate farms. Uh, and so fair trade chocolate and all of that is, is in an, a, an attempt to stop the exploitation of uh, the workers who are harvesting the cacao pods. There's a lot to it. There's an awful lot of history to this. There's an awful lot of controversy to where and how it's grown. Um, and so, you know, if you've got any political leanings towards fair trade um, and making sure that workers have rights, then look for the best, best possible quality. And, um, you know, just be aware if you do choose your M&Ms or your Mars bar or your Cadbury's or your Hershey's, that that's 
behind those brands is where the controversy often lies rather than the um, single producer who is mm. shipping beans over from a single origin plantation. Yeah. Do you want me to shut up now? <laughs> <laughs> there is so much more we can talk about. Oh, so, so maybe, you know, perhaps that'll be a future episode. Um, so, yeah, I think we've given a good overview <laughs> of cacao and why we love it and the benefits of it and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so what I will do is put a link to Forever Cacao, again, not sponsored, um, in the notes below this um, episode so that, um, you know, the whole small businesses, supporting small businesses is very important. Um, so if you do want to check out his products and how he goes about making his chocolate, then you can find that in the link below. Um, so all that's left to say is thank you for being with us for this episode of Talking to Introverts um, and exploring the world of ceremonial cacao with us. Uh, anything else we need to say or shall we just say see you next time? Well, we won't we're see done. you. Let's say we're done. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. We're done. <laughs> we're today about cacao. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.